Welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for joining. We are very thankful uh, with this fantastic panel that will open our webinar series uh, called the Digital Tools and Technology to Inform and Engage Citizens in the Budget Process, Experiences from the Field. And as the name expresses it, uh, this, this webinar series will um, discuss the experiences from GIFTS, the Global Initiative Fiscal Transparency, um, Ali's uh, and stewards in developing and using technology to promote the communication of budget information uh, and also the participation of citizens in the budget discussions and in the uh, fiscal policy discussions. To start, this webinar series, we're very lucky to have um, the opportunity to learn from the very um, enlightening experiences from Brazil and South Africa. We have Otavio Neves from the Secretariat of Transparency and Corruption Prevention in Brazil, and Carmela Zigoni from the Institute for Social Studies um, in ESC in Brazil to discuss the process of, um, that led them to restructure, revamp, renew the, the portal of fiscal transparency in Brazil. And from South Africa, we are lucky to have Raquel Ferreira from the National Treasury and Zuki Kota from the Public Service Accountability Monitor, who will be sharing the very rich and exciting experience from the Imali Yetu coalition of civil society organizations working with the treasury to build a, a portal that responds to the needs of users. Um, I will leave the presentations there and start right ahead with Otavio. Uh, then we will have Carmela uh, commenting on Otavio's presentation and then that will give us um, the place to start with South Africa. Thank you very much, and we'll start with Otavio's presentation. Great. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, so uh, I'll talk a little bit about the transparency portal, um, the concept behind it, and the current version that we have. So uh, the portal uh, history begins in 2004, and we started small publish, in, publishing information about uh, transfers that the government, uh, the federal government was doing to cities, municipalities and states. And from that, uh, we started to publish more and more information and using this information to try to have an uh, impact in, in pub public management. And the reason we started doing that was because, uh, so Brazil is this very large country. We have 5,500 municipalities. And for us, it was uh, key to make sure people uh, that were close to the, the policies and projects of the government uh, participated and in the oversight of these projects. Uh, we don't have enough auditors to monitor what is happening in health, in security, in um, education, in all those municipalities. And uh, the idea of having more people uh, doing this oversight is what started the, the project. So um, today we have a ton of information in the website. Uh, we have all information about uh, the federal spending. Um, we also have information about the revenues. We have information about uh, uh, the budget, the planning of the budget, not only the execution. Uh, we have information about the transfers. We have information about uh, each agency and public servants. All, in the case of the public servants, we go all the way to their salaries. We have information on contracts, on procurement process, and every information that we see as key information for 
uh, people to participate in doing this oversight and in, in engaging uh, in controlling the how government is acting. And uh, this year, in the end of the first semester, we launched a new version of the portal that was not only uh, preoccupied on how to what information it was available. We were also uh, concerned about how this information was published, how we make sure uh, that people that are interested in doing uh, this oversight, they would use this information. And the, the portal is uh, the one you see in your screen. And it has different ways to allow you to find the information. So uh, you can, for example, have broad overviews about uh, how government is spending or about the budget uh, using graphic visualization about uh, this spending. And so by navigating in interactive graphics, you can find information that uh, on all those different topics that I mentioned, you can navigate in graphics on expenditure, you can navigate in graphics about revenue and procurement and contracts. Uh, but we also have uh, people that are not interested in this overview, they are interested in navigating in more specific uh, ways. They want to, you know, access the data, and there are a few ways to do so. One is what we call the detailed uh, navigation, where you have these tables, and those are interactive tables where you can add or remove columns, uh, and you can try to uh, generate your own graphics, you can download this information, uh, and you can use a wide range of filters that allow you to uh, find the information that you're looking for or try to narrow, uh, narrow uh, the, the information that you're looking for. And by doing that, you, you can uh, try to uh, find very specific situations such as I want to know about the contracts of uh, public agency X and I want to know uh, that in a particular um, scope of time or maybe I'm interested in, in a specific public policy and I want to know about this public policy in my uh, municipality. So there are several ways to navigate it navigating this uh, in this information and this allows for uh, like we, like I said different publics to use this information in the way that is more convenient to them and of course uh, we also have uh, a lot uh, available in open data uh, and this can either be by downloading uh, our databases uh, or using APIs that allow uh, machine uh, readability uh, for those interested in using this in maps. And the reason we have this in those two different formats is that uh, we have publics or uh, a target uh, the use of the information to develop their own applications. But also we have, uh, for example, the uh, journalists who like to download uh, their own uh, uh, files so they can uh, cross this data with different data or so maybe uh, try to fish for uh, information that, that can be useful for their new space. Uh, so uh, uh, there is this alternative for getting the information in the portal. And uh, beyond the portal itself, we, we are very clear in the idea that uh, for us, the main uh, goal was to have this information available to citizens. Uh, and it's not you know, to just have people uh, coming to the website. So for us, uh, 
if someone finds relevant information that came from the transparency portal, but the, the person did not uh, use the portal itself to get this information, it's, it's relevant. Because in the end, we want better public management, we want better accountability. So for example, we have a, a very iconic case uh, in the history of the transparency portal uh, related to uh, the cards, uh, credit cards that governments in Brazil use. So uh, we have these credit cards that some uh, public agents use, uh, and in the website we have information about the usage of these credit cards. And in 2007, uh, we 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 were publishing this information, and uh, some in the media caught this information and start doing some analysis and they found that uh, some of the users of this credit card, uh, so here for example we have a credit, uh, uh, a ranking on who is spending more with these credit cards and they started to notice that uh, some very high level officials were misusing this credit card and it was a huge scandal we have a minister who had to return money, another one who stepped out of the office. And since then, uh, the spending with the credit card dropped uh, significantly. In, in the following year, after the series of news pieces on the use of the credit card, uh, the expenditure dropped by 25%. And by now, uh, if we take the, the inflation, it's over 50% less than it was uh, 10 years ago. So that's the kind of impact that a transparency portal uh, can have. But then again, we, we're not just uh, committed on publishing the information, we are committed to having people using this information, which is why uh, the portal have uh, several tools uh, to help with that. So for example, in every page of the portal, you have uh, the possibility of sharing information with social networks. You can generate your own QR code. So for example, if there is works being done for the construction of a school, you can uh, find this information in the portal and then put this QR code uh, in, uh, in the place where the work is happening so people want to get information uh, about this. Uh, we also have this uh, learning session where we publish uh, several uh, videos and also infographics and, and texts to teach people about not only the navigation of the portal but also about uh, important concepts uh, about the budget, about uh, how uh, the budget is organized, how the government make spending, uh, how to get further information, for example, using the access to information law uh, and several other informations and several other tutorials that are important for people to uh, make better usage of the transparency portal. Um, we also want people to, uh, we also want to facilitate, facilitate people using this information. So we use push systems uh, to make sure that people get what they want. So, for example, I can ask to be informed every time a public policy uh, has spending on it, or maybe I'm interested in contracts, so I want to know, for example, when the government makes a new contract with uh, uh, a particular uh, supplier or uh, when a particular uh, government agencies uh, gets a new contract, uh, so I can uh, subscribe to these notifications uh, as to be informed about uh, what's happening without having to, you know, browse in the portal uh, with regularity to to find this information. So again, it's about making uh, it easier for citizens and for uh, and for civil society organizations and journalists to find this information. Um, we also, uh, because we are uh, very uh, uh, 
preoccupied with the usage of this. Uh, we also do uh, workshops all the time about, uh, about the, how to use the portal. Uh, those can happen in civil society organizations, those can happen in um, the editing room of a newspaper, uh, because again, uh, as much as we try to facilitate language, uh, budgeting is not you know, a simple uh, uh, structure, uh, it, it's, it's a matricial structure, and there are so many policies in the government there are so many levels uh, of of the the way uh, things uh, happen in the government that it can get a little complicated sometimes. And uh, if we want people to keep monitoring uh, what the government is doing, we need to keep them uh, engaged and we need to keep them uh, informed and and well trained to to use this information. So. Uh, it's it's an imperative for us to go beyond the portal itself. The portal is, you know, the uh, is how we we come in. It's how we start the whole process. Uh, but in the end, it's not enough, and we need and we have been doing so, working with the monitoring of uh, how. Uh, agencies are working their transparency. Uh, we have been working with skill building. We have been working with training, uh, we, and everything we can do to ensure that the information is not just published; it's actually being used and it's been uh, impactful uh, in the government. So, in a nutshell, uh, that's the transparency portal. That's uh, what we try to do with this, uh, going way beyond uh, the, the sole publication of information, but foc focusing on having uh, the process all the way we publish. We want someone to use it. And then comes the most important part and probably the trickiest one. Uh, we as government need to be responsive about this. So, uh, for example, in the case of the uh, uh, the credit card that I mentioned, so the information was used, the problem was found, and there was a response. And the, 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 not only did the government spend less, but they changed rules to make sure that people would spend more responsible responsibly. Uh, we had a similar, uh, another interesting case from 2015 uh, when there was uh, some scrutiny about one policy uh, that is funding for uh, graduation level education. And so based on numbers that were being published in the portal, uh, it, uh, some scrutiny began about the program that the government had uh, for funding education, and it resulted in a major overhaul of the policy. Uh, the rules were changed because, uh, again, oversight showed it was an ineffective uh, policy. It was not uh, getting the result it was aiming to, and because of that, uh, the government responded. So this is uh, this the portal. Like I said, is it's just an interest, but it, we have to have a, a complete system uh, around it to make sure it, it brings the change that is uh, its goal. So um, we might have gone a bit too quick. I don't know, Tanya, um, but since we didn't have much time, uh, I'll start with that, and you know, maybe we can open for some questions when you when the time is right. Thank you, Otavio. Thank you for this. This really was a, a big, big effort to to summarize all, the, all of, of what the new portal contains and also to explain what the logic and the ultimate goal of, of reworking the, the portal was, the reasoning behind it. So this was very useful. And now we'll uh, go to Carmela Zigoni from INESC to have the point of view of, uh, of the user of civil society um, 
with respect to the portal? So, okay, hello everyone. Um, so I will do some comments uh, through this perspective of civil society. Um, it's a fact that it was a huge revolution when the um, uh, transparency portal was launched in 2004 and uh, the new updates is, is amazing. Uh, I always congratulate Otavio and his team for that. Um, after uh, 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 2004, we had many new portals that were launched in Brazil. And also the legislation accompanied that. So we have uh, the access to information law and, and the civil mark uh, of internet. So this came with a huge new culture of open data in the country that is pretty amazing. So it's uh, 15, almost 15 years of uh, building a new, um, as we say in Brazil, social control um, about the government data, public data and everything. Um, about the new portal, um, specifically, it's a very good one, um, but we believe that uh, for common citizens, um, it's amazing because you can view in maps, you can search uh, using filters, uh, simple ones like, uh, I don't know, women, you can put there and search about women policies and uh, find a lot of information. And uh, it's a very uh, complete uh, tool for um, civil society in general. Uh, in INESC, in my organization, you, we use um, uh, other portals also that we have here, that we have a more um, uh, disaggregated, maybe I don't know in English, but uh, information with more uh, complexity. And the portal we use to complete our analysis, uh, to check some contracts and everything. Um, but um, we believe that we have to discuss now a second step in this in Brazil, because we know uh, many countries are open um, their data. And now, as you can uh, could see with Otavio presentation, we have a lot of open data in Brazil. But the question is, who is processing that? That's why when Otavio said that it's important uh, uh, that people are uh, as accessing this data, we have to look with some uh, critical view because we know that private sector, for example, have more has more uh, resources to processing all this this data uh, and use that to strategic decisions, uh, to monitor contracts and everything. And civil society, mm -hmm. organize uh, CSOs and social movements don't have this resources so in this in this sense the portal is important because they process a lot of data and organize that and th this is um, provide more friendly data um, especially to social movements or the common citizens itself but uh, it's important to start to think in a discussion of a public policy to uh, use access and reuse of this data that promote citizens' rights, because we are concerned that there, there is a um, difference of levels in groups of society uh, that uh, actually access that and understand that and use that um, to promote solutions to a better society. Um, um and also um in brazil uh, as you can see in the portal you have 
a space that uh, is calling social control. Uh, in Brazil, we have in our constitution uh, many mechanisms institutionalized for social control. For example, councils. We have national councils, um, state ones, and in municipalities also. Uh, and it, it's um, it's very important that government uh, try to connect these spaces of social participation and public control to this information that are available in the portal through trainings, through partnerships, uh, connect more the information to people. Um, uh, and this also improved the, the, the work of these councils. It's important to highlight uh, to people that don't know this structure in Brazil. These councils, it's very interesting because they, they are composed uh, half by government and half by civil society. Um, employees of, for example, in health council, you have um, government sector of health and also employees of public services and um, um, beneficiaries of the policy. So they are in this uh, space dialoguing about uh, the public policy and this kind of information, it's very important to them. Uh, what else can I say? Um, ah, uh, in INESC, um, my organization, we we develop uh, uh, this. Uh, we are like um, we play the role of intermediaries of open data. So we process this data uh, and and transform in analysis in in other products like videos or depends of the public that uh, we want to achieve. And now we will start uh, a new cycle of trainings and we will test uh, the transparency portal with the students um, or leaderships and using our process of discussion of uh, public budget and uh, social rights. Um, uh, at the same time, we use the portal to see how uh, they can uh, make a search or uh, construct uh, uh, relevant information for their communities. For example, we will start with uh, indigenous uh, groups. In Brazil, we have uh, about 200 different uh, ethnics uh, in the country and they are very organized in social movements, uh, especially uh, in the fight to social and environment rights, for example. And we know that the public budget uh, could promote or violate their rights. And uh, we will discuss this with them and the uh, transparency portal we use, and we will test if they uh, could make some uh, researches. I think it's that for now, and then I can comment uh, another um, information that came from our meeting. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Carmel, Carmela, for complementing the view uh, that Otavio presented and really pointing out very um, sensible issues uh, uh, in terms of the complexity of, uh, of designing a portal. Uh, and the possible trade-offs that come with trying to make that information um, more available to the to the to the general public. Um, I want to take the opportunity to mention that the case of the public policy councils that you were mentioning uh, is uh, systematized and included in the in the gifts guide for public participation in fiscal policy. So anyone who wants to learn. Um, more about the, the councils can, can dive into the guide and, and read the, the case. Thank you, Carmela. And now we'll turn it to Raquel to uh, learn about the, the South African experience. Thank you, Raquel. Thank you very much. Uh, a warm South African hello to everyone. Um, the South African budget portal 
called vulekamali.gov.za was launched in February of this year. It has changed significantly in these uh, few months. We are currently using an agile development approach, meaning that the portal is developed in a phased manner and is con constantly changing and improving. We'll take you now through the home page, which basically shows the highlights of the budget in graphic format. There is a table with revenue sources ranging from the largest to smallest and funding by function group. They're also linked to the three spheres of government and how the budget is related to them. Then if we look at the main tabs of the portal, we've got a tab called departmental budgets. That basically shows budgets by sector department is published in the national and provincial budgets and in addition there is an API which publishes detailed data sets and is something that previously was not available to the public. This is to help researchers in their analysis and comparisons. Data is also available in different formats including CSV, etc. PDF data and open spending API formats depending on what the source data is. Then if we look at the next uh, main tab, it's called learning and this is basically where we put educational videos about what the portal is. Uh, we also have information about what people can learn through the portal and several different types of information on how they can you hold government to account. The tab also has a glossary function which shows definitions for all techni technical terms frequently used in the budget. One of the latest features that has been added is one which shows what is happening in the budget process for each month so that people can better understand uh, what stage we are in and how they can participate. Let's just show you that. Okay, so it's our month um, and it shows you where we are at. Then the next main uh, tab is called contributed data and that is basically it consists of the budget information and reports shared by various institutions. So it's not only by government. So for instance, there are certain um, uh, articles that have been added by civil society organizations such as PSAM and SPY, etc. Then we have a tab called data sets, uh, which shows performance and expenditure reviews done by the Government Technical Advisory Center, which is actually a government component within the National Treasury. And there they basically quantify, assess and make recommendations on how the cost effectiveness of public policy and public spending can be improved. Then we have another tab called Frequently Asked Questions. And as the name implies, there are uh, various questions that are typically asked and there are the answers to those questions. And then the last main tab is about uh, and that includes the background information on the project. So it gives the project the background, the project description, the status and um, all sorts of information along those lines. Now we'll uh, move on to uh, more information of developing uh, on developing the portal itself and how cooperation amongst budget authorities and civil society can help to develop portals. 
So what we found in the South African experience is that in order to develop a portal, you typically need to find advocates within government and civil society that are committed to taking this agenda forward. We found it very useful in our experience. Uh, also, organizations such as GIFT play a critical role in bringing these advocates together and in so doing, sharing spaces or creating spaces whereby different organizations can connect, share expertise, and assist each other in more, uh, moving forward. On the specific development of a portal, the South Africa's budget office team within the Treasury has since 2015 participated in international workshops and discussions with other countries such as Brazil and Mexico and have shared their uh, experience with other members of, this, of the network. This has helped us significantly. Civil society organizations from South Africa have formed part of these workshops too, and together we have committed to uh, moving forward. So this, the gift organization has actually helped us significantly. Another thing that is useful in developing a portal is when governments formally commit to it too, through avenues such as the Open Government Partnership Country Action Plans, um, this means that the progress is not reliant on specific individuals. So while advocates are important, it's also important that there are more formalized commitments, meaning that if those advocates have to leave the organization, the portal can continue. It can sometimes be difficult for governments to engage civil society meaningfully, given that civil society typically consists of a diverse set of organizations, each with different goals, and as such requests from, from governments, some of which could be contradictory. So in the past, we used to struggle a bit with this because we did not have a central point to call on. What has greatly assisted us is that in South Africa, civil society was able to organize themselves into a coalition called Imalietu. And I'm sure that uh, Zuki will elaborate more on this uh, when she speaks next. This is basically meant for us that for purposes of developing the portal, government has been able to have direct CSO contact people with whom to partner with. These CSO representatives have been able to get us consolidated requests and inputs this has to a large extent eliminated some of the contradictory views and enabled us as government to respond better uh, to one voice. South Africa has always published extensive budget information. What we have learned is that making information available is not enough. Having information available according to user needs is what actually tends to make the difference. Interacting with CSOs has helped us tremendously in this regard by getting from them the specifications of the information that they are interested in. Not only that, CSOs have also embarked on a journey with us to go three, throughout the country spreading the word about the South African portal, assisting users in effectively assessing the information as well as gathering further user needs from different sectors, including other CSOs that are not currently part of Imalieto, uh, community user leaders, uh, group leaders, etc. What we have learned is that regular communication and engagement is key. Within the development of our portal, project governance measures have been put in place. For instance, we have projects, operations and steering committees which have been formed which allow us to interact on a regular basis and for important decision making to take place. So for instance this morning we had an operations committee meeting on the development of the portal. In this meeting we had representatives from government as well as from CSOs. It is very important to have a genuine uh, desire to improve, taking all the inputs into consideration and engaging um, each other honestly on every aspect. Developing a trust relationship between governments and CSOs is also key in moving forward. Natural tensions all, will always exist and need to be understood and accepted. CSOs 
on the one hand need to understand the constraints facing governments and governments need to understand that the nature of civil advocacy work is naturally to push governments into new spaces, some of which can be rather uncomfortable. The kind of resources that we found we needed were that we needed several human resources. These include project tra uh, champions to drive the project that understand governmental processes, the role of transparency in the economy, and that are also able to take this message to the executive. Other key operational people are also required. For instance, ICT people, communication specialists, different uh, people are able to do analysis in different areas, etc. In South Africa, we also needed project managers. We need a critical partners or a CSO team. We needed IT development, stakeholder management, graphics design teams, etc. And naturally, in terms of infrastructure, we need reliable ICT infrastructure and the resources, the financial resources to actually run the project. How, the way we're planning to determine whether the portal uh, is a success or not is, is that as we're going, we've got certain project milestones that are contracted with the different relevant stakeholders. Reports are regularly compiled and reviewed as per contract requirements to ensure that the project is being developed effectively on time and on budget. We aim to put in remedial steps as and when required. Um, we'll consider the project a success if we finish it on time and within budget. If we get more people accessing the portal, if this leads to better engagements and contributions with civil society, and we have a more informed citizenry. So we're still at the very early stages of our portal, um, and these are essentially what we think is important. Now, if we go to the lessons we have learned thus far, is that both government and CSOs can learn a lot from each other, and that it is the willingness to listen to each other that often leads to success. Um, there are many different countries going through similar initiatives, and it's important to learn from them, um, adapting the learnings to your country's specific situation. So in developing the portal in South Africa, we've learned a lot from countries like Mexico, like Brazil, and we're hoping to be able to help other countries that are also developing their own portal. Then things get tough, even if you get have a good plan. Uh, perseverance is required. When things don't go as envisioned, go back to the drawing board and don't be afraid to adjust remembering why the project was initiated in the first place. Not everything is easy sailing. You will also, in this journey, um, you'll encounter many people that don't see the benefit of the project and will need to be brought on board by being shown uh, what the potential benefits are. You may want to lean on other champions at times to assist you in this regard. Then an important thing is that there will be unmet expectations that need to be effectively managed. Seeking perfection before continuing will in most likelihood hold back your project. Trying to satisfy too many needs at once can also hinder development. It's actually okay to start small and then build on as and when necessary, depending on what um, you deem more important as, at a specific time. Dedicated resources may be required together with for a firm resource allocations. It is difficult for people to do this in addition to their normal day jobs. Um, and lastly, we sometimes finding that required regulatory processes can be a hindrance to innovation and creativity, as sometimes failed experiments may be used as a wasteful use of resources, <coughs> even though they're necessary to develop something that is meaningful. Thank you. Thank you, Raquel, for this very, very complete and enlightening presentation. You've um, led us through the contents of the, of the portal, the process, lessons learned. This is really, really a very rich presentation. Thank you very much. Now we'll turn it to, to Zuki.
from PSAM to complement the, the South African experience. Great. So thank you so much, Raquel. I think a lot, um, and, and of course, a lot of what we would share overlaps um, naturally. So I think to start with, um, perhaps just a, a quick uh, introduction to um, who we are as a civil society co coalition that's um, part of the team on Vulega Mali. I'm going to try my best to cut my presentation short, um, just keeping an eye on the time, and it's been great to hear from everyone. Um, great, so Vulega Mali is um, quite a, an interesting opportunity for us as South African civil society organizations. Um, firstly, given that it's an online budget data portal, and for many of us, our focus is on budget advocacy and um, open access to information. So it brings together a list of organizations who work across different sectors. Um, and I think this is what makes it a particularly unique collaboration, both for ourselves as a coalition, um, but also um, with the, the various government departments and national treasury. Just to focus on what the project vision um, that I think is interesting for us is, and it's, it really is that the project, you know, seems to or wants to provide an informed or support an informed citizenry that are empowered um, and are empowered to actively participate in issues of governance, but also in ways that help us to hold government to account. Um, and that's within the project charter, which I think is an interesting one that we've agreed upon collaboratively that these are um, kind of a, is a central focus for the project. But to move along, I think I won't touch on um, very much further, um, aside from the fact that public participation is, is core for many of us in terms of um, the, the needs and the need to kind of get engaged in the project. Of the objectives that the project um, has, and, and Raquel has touched on some of these, um, two of two, one that's particularly important again is to make not only budget avail information available, um, but also to make it user friendly and accessible. So one of the ways that um, the project seeks to do this um, is through, as we've mentioned, an agile development process and. For many of us that are within the civil society coalition, the notion of an agile um, process is not one that's, that, that was a term that we knew beforehand in terms of project management. But just to touch on what this means and what it, all, what it has meant for the collaboration is that it recognizes the need to make um, information or, or data available in iterative steps. Um, on the one hand, but also the need to be adaptable, even in, in later stages. So the, the Agile manifesto places emphasis on the need to, it's never too late in a sense. This, of course, we found in terms of the project discussions, um, and I think Raquel has touched on this as well, has made it quite a dynamic process, but one that sometimes does offer tensions and difficulties. Um, but I think it's important that in terms of the process and the development, the agility or the Agile development process has been one that um, we've jointly agreed is um, important. So another element in terms of the how, so I've got four key ways that we've said how do we want to make um, broad civic participation possible or to make um, these to meet our objectives. The next, in addition to the agile process, is emphasis on broad civic participation. Um, and by this, one of the ways um, that we've said is that the project in some ways wants to recognize participation both as a means to an end but also as a means in it, or an end in itself in that on the one hand we want Vulega Mali to open up the space um, ultimately and promote participation within the within budget processes but at the same time we also want to use participation meaningful participation in order to influence the development of the portal so it's this kind of cyclical um, process in a sense about public participation, which is very central. The next element of, of how um, is in working with specific user stories and identified personas. So this is, and it's a pity again, um, so the use of user personas for us has been quite important. In about, in November 2017, as a project team, we, um, emphasize the need to ensure that the development of the process or development of the portal is influenced by, um, by users or with specific user stories. So through the, the, 
events such as the data quest. So at that point, there had been two or three events through which the project team elicited specific information from participants, asking things from um, how do you understand the budget? Why do you want to use the budget? Um, what work do you currently do? What drives you? What are your interests? So right down to the very personal level. And those were what was used to develop user personas, um, of which we, we've identified 12 um, that influence or that are part of developing the portal in terms of the frequency and, and the kind of depth of interest. So this is also to help us gain a deeper understanding of, of the roles and the functional requirements of each of those essentially user personas or each of those individuals. And these go from you know, data journalists, data scientists, civic, civil society leaders, um, economists and analysts. And one that I've chosen to, to share with everyone, um, in, in fact, in my presentation, was um, specifically one that um, was a teacher. So someone who um, wants to use budget information in order to empower learners within their space. I'm going to move along um, further in terms of my presentation, again, keeping an eye on time. The fourth element of, of how, in terms of how we wanted to meet our objectives, again relates to civic participation and reaching out across the nine provinces. So the expanse of the country does offer challenges in terms of speaking to a wide diversity of people. But we have felt that, um, and this links to another element of how, budget literacy um, and understanding of bu the budget process as a whole is something that's um, very, it's a big gap in our country, not only within public, but also we found within um, civil society organizations themselves. So this element has been quite significant in terms of uh, you know, us considering how best to target it and how best to elicit or to, to solve it in a sense. Um, and so Raquel mentioned learning resources, um, which thankfully we were able to show through the website or through the portal. And these also link to opportunities to engage directly in the portal. So each month there's more information. What I wanted to bring to everyone's attention there is also that um, along with the specific opportunities for the members of the public and civil society organizations to get involved, is the very real opportunity to also contribute um, external data. Um, and this is something that we're working on to kind of um, ensure that um, more people are able to engage, um, you know, through the process. So moving on, I'd also just, I think, to maybe to, to end off and, and we can touch on broader questions, what I'd also, and maybe I'll just, I'll share the presentation after the fact. Um, one of our colleagues within the, within Imali Yetu, um, who is a lecturer in um, the information systems department, wrote a really interesting article about the open government data ecosystem. And these are some of the issues that we've been grappling with ourselves around so, for example, when Carmela was talking about data beneficiaries, um, who are our data beneficiaries? and How do we explicitly engage them in a way that meets the objectives of the portal? So currently, that is something that we continue to grapple with. And I think, as Raquel has mentioned, it's something that we need to be quite mindful of. So of our data users and of our data beneficiaries, there needs to be a clear recognition of who needs what and what level of support should we be able to provide through the portal, um, both electronically but also in our various engagements and I think this is something that um, would be very interesting for us to hear from the Brazil context and to grapple with further. There's also and again I'll share this visualization around the, the open government data system that we're grappling with is the connection between civic actors and other government departments as well as the connection between civic actors and the national treasury. So there's a range of um, feedback and communication that we're finding we can we can enhance or we can you know, further interrogate as the project develops through them. Lastly, um, I just had uh, some parting shots and questions that I prepared. Um, and just to begin on them, actually, just in, in conclusion as well. Firstly, more than ever, we're seeing that the complexities that are implicit within the open government data system and within our own social accountability ecosystem are quite deep. They're, they're perhaps more, um, they're, they're deeper and, and wider than we had anticipated. Um, but I think that's a good thing in some respects. It's a good challenge for us to be faced with. We're also finding that capacity and resources, both financial and otherwise, pose a constant challenge and force us to adapt and work in genuinely open context. 
So I think for many of us, the term open and openness is taking on a very new dimension through this project. And again, I think that could be a challenge, but, but it's certainly one that um, poses some, some interesting ways for us to develop further. We also you know, would like to maybe grapple with the question around whether there are more or better ways to ensure or enhance broad and meaningful participation. Um, so we can touch on some of the ways that we have done this this, this far. Are there ways to entrench the co-production we have seen thus far? Um, are there key enabling factors or is this in fact context specific? And in particular, how can we avoid rollback or regressions in the partnership we've seen so far? Finally, um, our, our goals are ambitious and I think we can list these specifically around the project objectives and the project charter. So we are ambitious. Um, and this is far from easy, but we are heavily encouraged by the partnerships both within our country um, and specifically through networks such as GIFT. And I think the opportunity for, for peer learning and interrogating our process and interrogating particularly our assumptions around what it takes to build participation, those opportunities are very meaningful and we hope that we can continue to foster those. Thanks for now. Thank you. So we are almost running out of time, but um, uh, I, I would like to propose that we can that we take maybe three minutes each, three four minutes each. And I think that Zuki has done um, part of the job <laughs> for this part. I think you have posed very um, central issues and questions, Zuki, that complement. The, the whole discussion here, and, and you start uh, with um, um, uh, a question for for the Brazilian experience um, uh, in in respect to how do do you engage data beneficiaries and data users? Who are they? Uh, and that was actually um, one of the questions that that um, I had for for the Brazilian case. Um, when Otavio starts um, the, the, the presentation discussing that, the, that the, um, really the intention back in 2004 was to um, increase or, or um, uh, grow, promote the growth of, um, of social audit, of auditors, uh, to complement the work of formal institutions um, so what were the premises or what were your questions? What were you trying to answer? And this, this goes back to who are your, your um, data beneficiaries and data users when it, along, along this, the, this whole process that now has been uh, running for 14 years. And, and uh, uh, um, also the question on impact. Um, I think you all mentioned um, that, that, of course, the impact is not to have uh, keeping track of how many visits you have in your portal, but you really want to see this information being used. So how are you um, uh, uh, keeping track of impact? How do you think you can measure impact? But so I'll, I'll, I'll turn it uh, to, to the four of you to maybe make some closing remarks, reflections on three minutes or four. And, and again, I think, um, Zuki's questions are, are very provoking, thought-provoking, uh, about the complexities involved in, in promoting social accountability. Are there key enabling factors? Um, are there more and better ways to enhance participation? And how do we avoid regression when we've reached this, this point? So do you want to start maybe, Otavio? Sure. Uh, that's the kind of uh, challenge that we could talk hours about. But um, in a nutshell, I think it, you have to think of this as a system, not in only the IT uh, sense of, of the world. But uh, you need to create uh, whole communities. And and, and, and you must understand how uh, people in the government can engage, uh, how different uh, publics uh, in society can engage. Um, but it is start that with uh, purpose. Uh, we, we think uh, when we talk about 
this sort of transparency. We think uh, of it as a policy. Uh, we published uh, this particular data set because we believe this data set uh, can help with this or with that. Uh, so, for example, when we publish information uh, about uh, public servants, it can help fight nepotism, it can help fight conflict of interest. So, for each data set, you must try to find out who is interested in working with uh, this data set and how uh, they would go about it. And you probably find out that there are multiple publics with different ways of using this and you probably won't have the answer uh, that's perfect for for everyone so uh, you need to pick some of the, uh, the publics that you can deliver uh, like uh, Hakel said you you can't you know wait to have everything perfect but you know try to work first with who you know is more ready use this information and bring results uh, because this facilitates the evolution of the process and try to have uh, people in the government that can be responsive about this, uh, engaged as well, try to have those people uh, working together. Uh, and I mean, it's, it's a big process. Um, for example, Carmela mentioned a point that it, that's, uh, it's quite a conundrum because we want as many people as possible using uh, the portal, but at the same time, it's very difficult to make uh, everyone um, use it because, again, it's very complex. Uh, and then you start to design some uh, some paths, some, some alternatives to make this work. For example, in our case, uh, working with journalists is extremely fruitful because they want this information. It's very valuable for them and they uh, have more talent and more capacity uh, to translate this to the general public uh, than we do. So uh, this is a partnership that uh, it is very powerful for us. Of course, uh, it often means uh, that they will hit the government with uh, you know, news that are not so uh, so good in terms of how the government will look uh, uh, when the, the, the news piece come out. But uh, you know, it's it's part of the uh, of the process, and you have to know that this is uh, is necessary uh, to make the improvements that we want. So, uh, you know, to summarize, the idea is to for each data set, you know, you have a purpose, you have a result that you want. Uh, and you commit to collect uh, uh, the impact of publishing this information. And the best way to do so is to keep working with everyone that's involved, either as users of the information or, or as uh, responsible for, uh, for this. For example, if it's a policy, who in the government is responsible for this? Because if you keep in touch with those parts, you can... Uh, it makes easier to monitor uh, those results, and it makes easier to uh, uh, to improve uh, the way you are publishing the information and uh, what's uh, what you need to do uh, better uh, in, in the long term. Thank you, Octavio. Thank you for your final reflections. Can we turn it to Carmela, please? Yeah, uh, I agree with Otavio because it's a, a process, uh, in our case, a historic process because they have 15 years of uh, open data and open information. Uh, I think uh, just we have to be aware that uh, the, the technology that uh, exists today in the world, it's very um, ahead of the government uh, technology and capacity to respond uh, to this um, necessity to process this data in information. Um, it, one example that uh, I I like to give is about uh, open budget uh, hunking 
uh, of IBP because Brazil is the sixth in the ranking and we keeping uh, being a very corrupted uh, uh, state and governments and how this is possible if we um, put all our information available to the public how the some politics and some corporations and um, keep uh, doing that uh, it's because the, there is a culture um, in in this environment that corruption it's part of this structure and we need to confront that uh, as civil society and try to understand the mechanisms um, that are behind of that. Now, for example, we are working on um, to open information about tax expenditures in Brazil. There, there are a lot of opacity on that, on, uh, also in public banks. Um, so the the a portal like a transparency portal and our legis legislation are stimulating the culture that now we have more transparency so we are looking for another sectors of government not only to executive but but to judiciary in brazil is very close and uh, and if I'm, I'm not wrong it's not in the transparency portal the the information about judiciary uh, um, and um, the parliament information, we have some open data, but not all. Uh, so it's important that we are um, walking uh, and, and making advocacy to open more data. But we believe that we have to have two parallel uh, process going on. Um, open the data and giving people um, the capacity or to process as journalists, academics and CSOs and or to understand that through friendly um, products and mechanism. Of course, it's not only uh, all people uh, will access this kind of tool, but um, we need um, to promote a more equitable uh, environment to access uh, to public information. Thank you very much. Thank you, Carmela. Thank you for those conclusions. Uh, Raquel? Um, I think being mindful of time and the fairly rich discussions that have already taken place, I'm going to keep my um, comments fairly brief. Um, we all well, we in South Africa are grappling with several issues, as Zuki has put forward. A lot of those are to do with participation and what is meaningful participation and how we can best reach the most amount of people with the limited resources that we have. So one of the key things that I think keeps coming up time and time again is how do we obtain value for money in the development of the portal um, and ensure that we reach, we stay true to our project charter and we stay true to the commitments that we made when we started off this portal. The portal is fairly young in South Africa, so we don't have long insights like our colleagues would from uh, Brazil, but I think what we've learned so far is quite a bit and Essentially, it's a deep learning curve, I think, for both governments and CSOs. What does help is if from both sides there is a genuine commitment towards development and if we are open to listening to each other and actually handling this as a team in trying to um, develop. Um, having said that, um, uh, these things are not all normally easier said than done uh, but yeah we are grappling we'll learn from each other and slowly we'll get there we might not get there in a day or two but uh, step by step we will get to the goals that we want to achieve thank you 
Fantastic, Raquel, for that inspiring conclusion. Zuki, you'll be you'll do the honor of closing the final remarks, please. <laughs> I'm not even sure if you can hear me. I'm really struggling yes. with my. Okay, great. We can um, hear you, and don't worry, Zuki. We'll try to to edit the the video so we can see your presentation. Otherwise, we'll just um, uh, enclose it with the with the the webinar. So we'll make sure okay. that that your presentation is available. But you were very clear. Right. <laughs> Thank you. Super, I appreciate that. It's, yeah. Um, but just uh, quickly, and I, and I think perhaps it should have been um, that inspirational ending that Raquel had that really closed us off. <laughs> but um, I think encapsulating, you know, everything that everyone has said, and, and particularly what Otavia was saying around a lot of this, would also take us, you know, quite a long time to grapple with. But I, I just thought to touch, you know, finally on, on these elements and around that, I think it's always good to have reminders around what ultimately these things are for, what ultimately the portal is, is for and what the objectives are. And it's really about improving people's lives, but also improving governance in our context. And I think every time we remind ourselves of that, it does make quite a, quite, what can be quite a tricky process um, a lot more fun and it, and it can be fun. Um, and I think ultimately it's also for us, it's been interesting to see the ways in which we can influence, you know, openness or a climate of openness um, in, in South Africa. Um, at the provincial level, we haven't been able to speak particularly, you know, to, to any depth, but what we're also looking forward to, to that and influencing a process of open government and, and developing a real open government policy, which we currently don't really have. And I think that'll be another process for this project um, in terms of spearheading and, and being kind of, yeah, charting new paths for us. So I really think it's it's in many ways a really, really new space. Um, and I think we are pioneering in, in many respects. And it's, it's great to kind of hear, for example, the experiences in Brazil, for instance, around both, you know, in the civic space and in, 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 in you know, in, in, in the government space around what the impact is. And I'm really excited to hear, you know, for example, about the forums and the spaces that can be created. Um, and ultimately, it's really, really reassuring, certainly from a civil society perspective, to also know that the budget literacy questions and the participation questions that we are grappling with um, continue to also be those that um, kind of preoccupy the discussions, you know, in, in, in far more developed contexts as yourselves in Brazil. So I think that's that's great, and, and it does show us that um, we're we're not we're not too much in the dark. Um, so that that encouragement is is great. So and and thank you very much for that. And we look forward to kind of learning more. We look forward to sharing more. Um, but I think the beauty for us at this point is that we can ask lots of questions because we're not at a point at which we can be necessarily, as Raquel says, we're you know we're just starting off. So a lot of it is about help us please and and here are some of what we're learning is this is this accurate and what ways can we improve so a really really exciting space that we're in and we're excited to be partnering with so many amazing people thank you thank you zuki for that let me i'll turn off other mics yes there thank you zuki for that also inspiring and also very inviting uh, a closing remark because this is I think what we're trying to do with this spaces in the webinars to learn more and invite others to learn more. So we have recorded this webinar and it will be available in the in the gifts webpage. And we we hope and we're sure that others will 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 listen and learn. And also if you if you want to suggest other topics to discuss in in a format like this, a webinar, uh, please feel free to do so. Uh, again, I want to, to thank deeply Otavio, Carmela, Zuki, and Raquel for your time, your commitment, and your very inspiring lessons learned for, for GIFTS partners and for the, the entire um, fiscal transparency community. Thank you very much and have a great day, week, and night. Thank, bye you. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.